and let us all that we can to build a better future. Speaking of, I guess, pornography in many ways, uh, there's the feel-good pornography that we see tweets from the progressive members in Congress who say, what does $15 minimum wage mean to you? What does Medicare for all mean to you? But when they're challenged on it, um, especially by reporters like, for example, Max Blumenthal of the Gray Zone. Mind you, the Gray Zone was in the fight for its life. They were uh, fighting against a lawsuit that was unjust and that if it went another way, it would have been a huge blow to free speech. Then it was Aaron Maté who was smeared by the middle-aged McCarthyites. Um, when it comes on the challenge of these progressives, why is it that they're, pro especially progressive members in Congress or in the Senate like Bernie Sanders, why is it that we have these cul-de-sac uh, progressives who have these large media networks, but they don't challenge the very people who fail to follow through with any of their campaign promises. In 2020, they promised us the moon, and they didn't deliver anything. Why is it that the cul-de-sac progressives and these progressive leaders in Congress smear journalists that are critical of them and smear them? Why are, th why are these elected members so protected? Uh, I mean, I don't know exactly why. I mean, I, I think you just need to make the observation like you did that that's what they do. Uh, that's what like the like Ryan Grimm at the intercept, right? He's uh, I've exposed him as running interference for the squad all over the place, right? So he wants to maintain his access to them. And so they have a cozy relationship like you saw when she went for her AOC went for the interview about forced to vote. She didn't come on a real progressive show to answer. She didn't go on Kyle Kalinske's show, the founder of the Justice Democrats, to answer questions about forced to vote. She went on the intercept with Jeremy Scahill, who doesn't know how to ask a follow up question, apparently, and gave her a softball interview interview on purpose. It was obvious. And I don't know how you could do that and not be embarrassed. Uh, but they're not embarrassed because they all hang in circles where they all have pat each other on the back. I mean, how can you still work at an organization that's pro-censorship and you call yourself a journalist? That's ridiculous. Have some dignity, have some character and stand up against censorship. But they don't do that at The Intercept. So, uh, they're all shit libs. I mean, you tell me why. It's all self-interest. Now, Ryan Grimm gets paid by not one billionaire. He gets a check from two different billionaires. You tell me why he's running interference for politicians. So, because he's, he's, he is the establishment. Uh, so why, why they, you know, why, why the regular shit libs with the MSNBC contracts do it? I think that answers itself. They have MSNBC contracts and they know if they were just like the Young Turks, uh, I just saw Glenn Greenwald make this point, which is a great point, that uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg decided to give Jeffrey Katzenberg, one of the richest men in all of media, uh, one of the top DNC donors, uh, the definition of the establishment oligarchy, uh, decided to give $20 million to the Young Turks. Why? Because he didn't see them as a threat. If they were actually a threat, if they were actually going to upset the system, he wouldn't be giving them $20 million. He saw them as a nice way that he could shore up the left with his own media company, and that's what he did. So they're not left. You know, like people like Cenk Uger and Anna Kasparian, they've revealed, especially in the last six, seven months since I turned my spotlight on them, that their, their flex is right wing. Their flex is, is, is neocon. They're imperialists. They'll spread misinformation about war, which is the most horrific thing you could do as a progressive. They, uh, what, what are we doing? We're bombing brown people all over the fucking world, and they're repeating CIA talking points and the pretext for doing so uncritically, even when it's been pointed out to them that they're lying. So those people are, that's their flex. If you grow up with corporate lawyer parents and you've never had to work for anything, you know, it's poverty, which informs my politics, you know. I grew up drinking powdered milk till I was in fifth grade, right? I was the youngest of 12 kids. And so, uh, well, I, ha I had one little sister we adopted, but uh, I mean, we grew up poor, poor, right? Uh, my dad had, we didn't have dual income. My mom didn't work, she had to take care of the family. So I think that informs you and those people who grow up without that kind of struggle and without seeing their friends struggle. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have a friend who does, couldn't afford their medicine or had to forego a, a, a doctor visit because they couldn't afford their $10,000 uh, deductible, uh, so those people don't know those kind of people. You know, Cenk Uger makes $350,000 a year. He lives in a $4 million house. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but it just, you get, you're out of touch uh, when you do that for like the last uh, 15 years, like he's been doing. So, um, you know, I'm out there pressing the flesh. I'm out there doing comedy in nightclubs, uh, meeting regular people all the time. Uh, and I am a regular person, you know. Uh, I myself went bankrupt not too long ago from medical bills. 
uh, my family was put through the ringer for that. Uh, my wife's worked 30 years as a teacher. I've worked 30 years as a, as a comedian and a radio show host and a writer. And uh, so we put our time in, we've paid our dues, and we know what it's like to struggle. And so that's what really informs my politics. And I still meet people who are struggling every day. I meet uh, 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 military people. I meet veterans who come to my shows who tell me uh, how, uh, thank you for telling the truth about the wars. Thank you for keeping it honest and thank you for keeping it real. And I've had people try to, military people try to give me their medals. And of course I couldn't accept them, but um, so that's what informs what I do. Uh, you know, of living a certain way for 50 years. And uh, I think that's what informs what they do. They didn't live a certain way. You know, they didn't have those struggles. They didn't follow those challenges. You know, they all went to Ivy League schools. I didn't go to Ivy League schools. I couldn't afford that. So, and um, so I, I think that's, and you see a big, the problem with the left, and I think forced to vote exposed it, was that uh, the left, half the left doesn't really give a shit about lefty progressive goals. They care more about high school uh, uh, politics, you know, and trying to one-up each other because they don't need... So those people with MSNBC contracts, they don't care if Medicare for All passes. They don't care if we get uh, a living wage. Those people don't even know anybody who needs a minimum wage. Those people, like I said, if those kind of people ever got within five feet of a worker, they'd get punched in the face. So... Uh, I'd like to go see, go, go organize, go try to organize, well, you know, and those people, those are the same people who say we need to organize along class lines, and they're explicitly bullshitting you when they say that, because when you're going to organize along class lines, that means you're going to organize with Trump voters who are in the same class as you, and those people aren't ever going to even talk to those people. They have nothing but derision in them. They have nothing but contempt for those people. They call them deplorables, so they don't understand how to organize along class lines whatsoever, and the guys, the people who do know how to do it. Uh, the people who, like me who've been in unions since I was in fucking college, uh, I do know how to do it. I, 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 and the way you organize is you don't go to the union floor and go, hey, who here is a right winger? Who here is a boogaloo boy? Who here is a proud boy? Who here is a libertarian gun nut? You're, who's a Trump voter? You're all out. Now I'm going to organize with these class people. That's not how class organization works, right? I showed you the examples of in Las Vegas, it was the Black Panthers uh, uh, joining hands literally to walk uh, with, the, with uh, the KKK to protest the welfare checks being withheld by the governor. And they knew that if the Black Panthers didn't get their checks, the poor white people weren't going to get them either. So they walked hand in hands and they shut down the strip in uh, Las Vegas and they got their checks. That's what organizing a lot class lines means. It's like, we disagree on a lot of stuff, but we have a common interest. So just like Chris Hedges says, there are no permanent allies. There are only permanent interests. Uh, final note for this question. First, we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, while you're here in Chicago to be with us. But for those who don't know, uh, for our viewers and subscribers who don't know where to find you, where can they go online to find you on social media and also see where they can watch you live on the show? And will you be coming back to Chicago anytime soon? JimmyDoorComedy.com is my website. You can sign up for the uh, membership program you get all the extra videos all that stuff all our, our live dates are there and I don't know what's happening with COVID so we've kind of pulled back on booking stuff for the fall and the winter and we want to see what's happening with how people are handling the mask mandates and the vaccine passes and all that stuff so it it it, it, it we, we're just going to wait and see how it works um, but jimmydoorcomedy.com so everybody can follow me there Great note to end it on. Uh, my name is Kit Gabell, the host of Heartlands Media. We're here with Chicago's very own Jimmy Dore. And if you want to choose to be violent on social media, be careful how you use your adverbs, pronouns, nouns, adjectives, verbs, all that good stuff. Peace and take care.